What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? So uh, today we are talking with Helen Green from the Recovering from Religion Foundation. And uh, we're going to be talking about something, uh, I guess, new that they're kind of uh, wanting to alert people to. Uh, uh, and I I'm, I'm just going to let uh, Helen sort of introduce herself, uh, tell, uh, tell us, you know, well, what she does for the Recovering from Religion Foundation. And then we'll kind of get into uh, what we're talking about today. So, uh, Helen, thank you so much for coming on to uh, the channel here. Oh, thank you, John, for having us having me on. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I I'm very grateful to the atheist community, um, especially online, that is um, supports recovering from religion and our mission. So I, I greatly appreciate you having me here. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I was ecstatic to get your email, and uh, I just had to find a good time for us to, you know, actually be able to sit down and and uh, you know have a talk. So, uh, but I'm I'm so glad that that uh, you know I was on the list of people that that y'all reached out to. <laughs> um, so uh, now, what do you do for recovering from religion? Um, so I have my hand in many hats at RFR. Um, I'm an ambassador. This is what I'm doing tonight. So I try to get the message out and about our program and what we do. Um, you know, like I can, like, if you go to a pride event, that's something will an ambassador do. They'll have like a recovering from religion table for people to approach, or you do it online. Um, basically it's a way of getting the word out. Um, I also am a virtual um, support group. Um, leader. I do that the first Sunday of the month where I kind of do the international one where we get a bunch of different people um, wherever they're struggling with doubt and non-belief and I lead those um, support groups. And I also co-host um, occasionally RFRX, which is our weekly podcast and a bunch of different topics like Secular Rarity was on last night talking about having um, uh, staying positive and difficult conversations so that's one of the topics that we talk that we talk about we also talk about like different types of religions and de deconversion and um all the things that comes with when you're leaving religion and also educating people on mental health issues and stuff like that so and um i did start off as an online agent but i kind of progressed into doing other things so but i've been with the organization um almost two years now it'll be november and two years will be november I mean, in November will be two years. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that sounds really awesome. I know that uh, Recovering from Religion has a lot of great online resources. And I think that that's one of the things that you're here to talk about today. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so um, when so obviously, if you are in the United States, um, Roe versus Wade got turned over by the Supreme Court and our reaction to it is like what what can we do um because i know i was feeling um really frustrated and um angry and saddened and stuff like that so i was like okay what can i do and uh, members of rfr decided to create this task force and basically what we're trying to do is we're also tr we're trying to offer a um, mental health mental health uh, support and what you know, pairing with like the secular therapy project, but also um, if someone like chat or calls into recovering from religion, we're trying to offer them resources, especially around this issue. Um, trying to like helping them answer their questions, dealing with the stress of dealing with what is going on. Because as much as we like to think that um, we, we always think about ourselves kind of in these situations and stuff like that. But for us, we're trying to figure out how we can reach out and actually be a force for good during this really, really difficult time. And we're also um, trying to pair with other secular organizations like the Freedom From Religion Foundation, other, and also like le our legal arm is working to kind of makes sense out of what's going on because right now with all the laws kind of being up in the air and, and nobody really knows where it's going to settle we're trying to kind of cut through the confusion and try to offer a place for people to reach out and get support and get resources if they need them mm -hmm. Yeah, I, as far as the the legal aspect of it goes, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that are starting to come come out. Like, I, I don't know if you've uh, re heard about the recent bill. It was actually, I think it, it was pulled. So, I mean, it, it's it's not 
going to become law, but I think it was in it was in one of the Carolinas where they were going to allow people to stop somebody from getting an abortion by deadly force or or you know allowing oh deadly goodness. force in order to to stop people. Which I mean, you know, that kind of goes along with the whole "I'm so pro life, I'll kill you" kind of uh, yeah. idea. But <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> like yeah. you're not making sense, man. <laughs> I, well, I was listening on NPR today because I'm better than you, by the way. If, I, if you listen to NPR, I'm better than you. So I was driving. Um, I was at work and I was driving somewhere, and they were talking about this woman. This was before um, Roe versus Wade got turned over. This was just back in May, and she was going through a very distressful, toxic pregnancy. The fetus was not going to be viable, and they had to wait. She had to constantly wait when she could actually get the procedure done because the baby was not going to be viable. It was, um, it still had a fetal heartbeat, but there was all these health problems associated with it. They had to wait till actually her life was actually, like her body went septic before they would actually perform the procedure. Even though she mm -hmm. was having bleeding, even though, um, she was, ha she was in a lot of pain. They were just like, yeah, um, and it wasn't because the doctors didn't want to perform the procedure. It was because the state is saying we need to make, make absolutely sure that the mother's life's in danger. Like what that line is, you know, which is bullshit. Cause obviously if the doctors are saying like this fetus is not going to be viable, it's causing harm to the mother, you know, the best course of action is to abort the fetus they were like, no, we have these, you have to have a fever. You have like your discharge has to smell. It has to look really bad. Like all these different things have to line up for it to happen. So that's one of the things that we're fighting against because this decision should be between a person and that is going to have a child or not have a child and their doctor. That is it. Nobody else needs to be involved. But when you get politicians that have never gone to medical school <laughs> and have never, you know, really dealt with the reality of why people are doing, having abortions and why they need access to good health care and why these things are important. They are just like, well, my base wants me to vote pro-life. So I'm going to vote pro-life. And then they, and the, I mean, I can go on a rant about the religious right and government and stuff like that, but that's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> I can bitch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I feel that I, I'm right there with you. I could rant all day about the religious right and what they're doing right now. Yeah. Um, but so you, you mentioned a, um, you know, some resources for people to use now, uh, and, and what, what kind of, uh, resources are you hoping to provide? Cause I know the recovering from religion foundation has like a, a hotline, I think that you can call into and get, you know, help and stuff like that. But y'all also have like online resources too. Is that correct? Yes. Um, we're going to be, we're going to be adding stuff to our resource page. So if you go to our website, go to resources, there'll be a bunch of stuff there. We're in the beginning stages of compiling everything together. If you call our chat in and let's say you want to find a charity that is off uh, helping um, people to get access to um, abortion or like the morning after pill, anything like that. Um, what's, what is the nearest state to you? That you can, if you're living in a state that where abortion is banned, mm -hmm. what state is nearest to you so you can get that access? We're tr so basically, we're trying to help people. Where they, where, where are you at on this issue? Are you someone that just is like me who is feeling very, very frustrated and wants to do something, or are you someone that's actually having to face? the possibility that you might have need this form of healthcare and mm -hmm. what resources do you have? So we're trying to do that as much as we can. Um, I know um, we're going to have an RFRX talk in I think two, three weeks, three weeks, three weeks in three weeks. Um, David, um, Weincott, he is one of our volunteers. He's also a lawyer. So we're going to be talking about the, um, 
the law aspect on that particular podcast. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, I'll provide you with the link so you can share it with your viewers if they mm -hmm. want to tune into that. So basically, this is where we're at. We're trying to get this word out as much as possible and trying to um, work with all the resources because the wonderful thing about being part of this organization is that we have our hands in many pots. We have a we have a lobbyist in Washington that speaks for us once a year and promotes secular values and the separation of church and state and things like that. So that's another route we are trying to take to get this issue and push for the that separation of church and state that we feel that we have a right to have because it's in the constitution. So <laughs> crazy. I know. <laughs> so, so that's where we are right now. So if you are, if you know, if you, or you know someone that would need our resources, please go to our website, www.recoveringfromreligion.org. You can chat or call in one with a, with a client, with one of our trained agents and they can help you get the help that you need. And we're also offering um, emotional support like in-house to our agents because this issue, it affects all of us on a really personal, deep level. And we also are offering support in-house to our agents so they're able to better help the, our clients that chat or call in. Okay. Have, uh, have, I, I don't know if, if y'all know any, <laughs> any of these metrics, but have y'all had people calling in, uh, to, uh, you know, ask, uh, you know, uh, for resources like this, you know, prior to this point, or is this, you're just preparing for We're, people to um, have those questions? We aren't quite there, but we anticipate that that is going to happen. And mm -hmm. this is why I'm trying to get the word out as much as I can, because we want to be a safe place for people to go, that we have a compiling of all this information that we can offer to people. That's the goal. And the more that we try to get the word out, the more that people connect with us, we feel like we're there. It's something that we're actually, it's actually something we're able to do and offer support to people because that's what we're, everybody's really looking for right now. Cause they're feeling distressed. They don't know where to turn. Everything's super confusing right now. Like I was reading an um, associated press article today on what each state is doing and it is mm -hmm. complicated. <laughs> yeah. It is very yeah. complicated. Like if I was a constitutional lawyer, I would. This would not be a. Fun, <laughs> this would not be a fun time. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, you have some states out there. Uh, I can't remember the exact state right off the top of my head. It's one of the red ones, but they're wanting to, uh, you know, prevent people from, uh, you know, leaving the state to get, you know, uh, healthcare services like abortion. Uh, and th they're wanting to prevent people from doing that for one. And then there's uh, also places like in my state of Alabama, there's actually a law on the books that says that if you commit a, a crime, I guess by Alabama standards in another state, you can actually be prosecuted here for the crime committed elsewhere. Uh, and it, it, you know, even though it's not a crime in the state that you, that, that, you know, whatever happened, uh, you know, you, it, it happened in, um, it, here in Alabama, there's a law on the, I don't know how enforceable it is, but supposedly, you know, uh, there's already a law where you can actually prosecute people for leaving the state to go and get abortion services and then come back. So, uh, it's, I mean, it can be, uh, pretty complicated, you know, navigating all the legal aspects of it. That I have to imagine that's going to be a logistical nightmare. For the people mm -hmm. that are going to want to enforce it because we're very used to crossing the state lines you know driving like if i i live in florida if i want to drive up to alabama i can do that like and nobody gives a crap <laughs> you know right and but what we're going to have like on state borders we're going to have border control asking women and people that are of age that are of age that can procreate to go, why are you going to, why are you going to New York? Why are you going to California? You know, why are you going mm -hmm. here? You know, if you're, if you fly, let, let's say you're living down the South and you fly up North. Does that mean like when you go to the airport, someone's going to be questioning you why you're going up North, why you're going upstate? Well, did yeah. you, uh, yeah. Did, did you, did you hear about the, um, there was an Australian woman that was flying to Canada uh, in order to house it for uh, somebody. I think it was, 
Um, I, I, it was an agreement that they had come up with. And so she had to fly. She connected through uh, LAX mm -hmm. and she got detained. And one of the questions that she was asked for some reason was, uh, have you had an abortion recently or are you and are you pregnant? What? Yeah. And I'm just, so I, I'm just, I, I don't want to live in the world where I have to report my health care history just to fly somewhere or, you know, right. go somewhere, you know, like I'm past, like I got my tube site after I had my son. So I haven't been pregnant in 18 years, but mm -hmm. I'm, st I guess still technically if I, you know, still had my, my fallopian tubes intact, would be able to have children right now. And the fact that anyone can be invasive and even the fact that I can't, the fact that someone can be that invasive with my healthcare and my decisions based on information that's only supposed to be between me and my doctor right. is really frustrating because it makes us feel like we're second class citizens in, in, in a democracy. Yeah, you know, no, and I it, totally it, agree. And that's the way it feels, you know, like that this right that is fundamentally healthcare, <laughs> right, got overturned because, like, what twelve percent of the country don't doesn't like it and wants an all out ban? Like twelve percent? Okay, all right. <laughs> like uh, the other eighty eight percent of us doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay. Like I said, I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Every time I go on Twitter, I see something new and stupid that the uh, conservatives are doing. And I, I end up, you know, yelling and cursing all over Twitter. P people I've, I've seen people say that they like just going through my timeline on Twitter mm -hmm. just because I'm sitting there yelling about all of these different, you know, dumb things that, you know, people are doing. Um, but uh, so uh, I know that, um, you know, RFR is uh, very big on, you know, volunteers, uh, having vol volunteers uh, come in. And, and like you were saying at the very beginning, uh, the things that you do, um, you know, for RFR. Um, and I'm just I'm kind of curious, is there any way that any if anybody wants to volunteer to help uh, RFR with this particular effort? Uh, is there a way that they can do that? Yeah, there's an application right on our website and we're always looking for volunteers and we will find a home for you if you're really good with um, webs um, doing website work, doing promotions work, doing tech stuff. You want to run a support group. You want to be an ambassador. What We will find a home for you. Um, whatever your talents are, we will find a home because we are completely volunteer run. Mm -hmm. We are a 501c3 charity. Um, so all of our money comes through donations. We're not, I'm not, nobody's making, I'm making all the atheist money. That's all the money I'm making right now. <laughs> so um, I don't do this because I'm making money. I do it because I really care about the mission and what we do at Recovering from Religion. So if you, if you're sitting there going, what can I do? Volunteer. You don't have to volunteer with us, but find a, find a place where your voice can be used and you can speak out. Or if you're supporting people that have voices that want to speak out, you're doing something, you, you know, because yeah. like you, you can sit there and be like, you know, old man yells at cloud, you know, or you can put put things to use, you know, but, but if you do volunteer with us, you'll be 20% cooler. So you should volunteer with us. <laughs> yeah, de definitely. <laughs> now, uh, as, as far as like, um, uh, maybe not volunteering, but I know that, uh, you know, uh, the RFR has a lot of, uh, you know, friends as far as, you know, uh, organizations out there. Uh, you had mentioned the Freedom from Religion Foundation. Are there any other organizations that, um, you know, y'all y'all would suggest are, are good organizations that um, could, could either help or be good to volunteer with or donate to? Um, well, I am going to mention who we partner with, which is the Secular Therapy Project. Um, keep in mind that when if you call our chat in to recover from religion, our agents are trained psychologists. We, we're trained. It's basically street epistemology with emotional support. That's what we do. And if you're dealing with, you know, difficult family members, 
like you're dealing with issues of doubt you're dealing with like a fear of hell or you're queer and you're dealing with that issue of being like we're we're there to offer resources and support and offer a non-judgmental ear that is our goal but if you do need actual mental health care you know you're dealing with depression anxiety um bipolar disorder or whatever it is we are um partnering with the secular therapy project and we and basically that organization is so you can get paired with a science based trained professional that is trained to deal with um, actual mental health issues. You're not going to get a, count, a counselor. Nobody's going to tell you to pray it away or anything like that. These are going to be people, they're going to, they're, they'll connect you with someone in your state. If that's what you want. Um, it depends, like, it gets a little weird when you were talking about different states and what they're different. Like if you practice in Florida, you might be able to practice in another state and do online therapy, but we really try to match people with people in their state. And this way you can get some mental um, health support as well. So we, we are partnered with them. Um, the other organizations we're partnered with, I'm going to apologize because um, I don't have that complete list <laughs> right now. <laughs> but what I can do is that once I get that list, I can send it to you and you can put it in the description and we'll yes. do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm not going to pretend because like I said, we are at the beginning of this whole thing um, and we do work with other secular organizations, but I'm more on the mission of which ones we're specifically working with for this um, re um, this repro reproduction rights task force that we're doing um, because that's the major message that we're getting at right now. But usually a lot of those organizations are also working with us on just because they're supporters for recovering from religion we all kind of partnered together in the secular support pool <laughs> right yeah okay cool uh and uh you know i i i haven't personally needed uh you know any of the services from uh, you know, the recovering from religion foundation, but, uh, I know that y'all, y'all do a lot of great work, uh, you know, in helping the community out and everything like that. And so I, I can't wait to see what kind of information you guys are, are going to provide through this task force. Um, now I, I know that, that y'all were talking about, or you, you were talking about, um, sort of creating a task force of legal experts. So uh, it, does that mean that like, if I, if I call in and I'm from whatever state and I want to know like what my options are as far as my reproductive choices go. Uh, does that, does that mean I'll be able to call in and like get those kinds of answers? That's what we're, that's our goal. So like, let's, because ultimately it would be really great. Like you live in Alabama. So if you're in Alabama, we want to be able to say, this is what the law says. Here mm -hmm. are your options. Right. And, uh, and then off and then offer resources for those options so you can get the help that you need. That is the ultimate goal, because the goal is, is that if like if you need emotional support and you need to work through your issues on this thing, yeah, we can do that. But the goal is really to help people if they are struggling with this. Like if you're in a state where they're saying, like, you can't you can't get an abortion. And what and what the legal parameters in that state actually are and then what options you have so you can get the health care that you need and i would uh, also too is that if you're going to be forced to birth a kid which is a nightmare and i think that no one should have to make that choice but we'll we can also have resources of charities to kind of help you through that process yeah you know because because it, it's going to happen you know because people are not going to be able to like fly like if you're living down in, in the south and like in the carolinas or whatever and you're some people can't afford, afford to fly up to new york and pay for travel expenses and hotel and get the procedure and all that type of stuff and possibly face legal consequences mm -hmm. you know I, I this is this is the reality so we have to be able to offer some kind of support to people that are going to have to make those really, really tough decisions and are kind of forced between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Yeah. I know, uh, here, here in Alabama, as far as like the situation of, you know, how they're wanting to force people to, you know, have babies, uh, if, if the, if you end up 
becoming pregnant. Uh, one of the most frustrating things here for me is the fact that um, nearly all uh, of the adoption services around here are like either Christian run or they like the when when the mothers uh, put their child up for adoption, they specify that they only want Christian parents to adopt the child. And so like it effectively makes it to where me and my wife uh, can't adopt. And so that's that's one aspect of the reproductive uh, care situation that I think is is going to be a really big issue. Uh, you know, come coming, um, coming down the pipe. Uh, Cause I mean, we, you know, both me and my wife, uh, we would, we would love to be able to adopt, you know, a child, but you know, we have, we effectively can't here in Alabama. So uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's really difficult. Well, like my brother, he adopted his son um, from Guatemala just because him and his wife at the time were older. They were in their forties. Mm-hmm. My mom had me when she was 45. Oh, you can wow. have a baby in your 40s, but you can't adopt a baby in your 40s. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what's kind of fucked up about, like, I mean, like, we can talk about the adoption issue, but these arbitrary laws that are put in, you know, put in front of people that people that actually want to have loving, supportive homes to kids that are in the system that need loving, supportive homes, just because like you're old, you're gay, <laughs> you're, you know, you're secular or whatever it is. These are not reasons to prevent, pe prevent kids being in a loving, supportive household, but right. it happens and it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's really stupid because if you're saying that you're pro-life and you are doing this for the children's, you know, then it's like, okay, then you want universal health care. You want um, free education. You want, you know, um, school supported lunch programs. You want to be able to get kids um, adopted that are in the foster care system. You want those things right, and they don't. They don't. They just they're pro birth. They don't. And then after you have the baby, you're kind of on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, there's actually been um, uh, I can't remember what her name was, uh, but uh, th there there was this one very pro life activist uh, that was going around to these preg you know the pregnancy crisis centers. Yes. Uh, and they, she, she was saying like, Hey, you know, you don't need to help mothers pass the six month point. Like you've got to cut them off. Like it, they're only concerned with, you know, birthing the children, like getting the children birthed. And then after that point, they literally do not care. And uh, it, it's, it's sad that, you know, that that particular minority of people, uh, has been able to, you know, change the shape of this country to the point where it's very, it's, it's becoming a, a, a very, um, uh, um, I guess, a uh, real thing that, uh, you know, women are going to be forced to give birth to babies. And it, it's, uh, it, it just, it baffles me. It's, I mean, I'm, I am very, very angry over the situation uh, so I know I can get a, a, a little ranty on it on occasion, but, um, but yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that, that uh, recovering from religion is, uh, you know, uh, going to be putting together this task force, getting all that information uh, in uh, one place. Uh, now I, I know some people might be thinking, well, you know, um, how, how will we know like when you guys get this, you know, going up and ready and everything like that, do you, do you guys like have a, uh, like a target date for having this information like on the website and having it's, these it's kind of ongoing about? it's ongoing right now okay. like we've already collecting resources so if our agents get that issue they can automatically give it to our clients so we're already starting to compile that so like if you call like if you called in right now and you're like hey i need some help with this an agent would be able to provide it for you and if they weren't they would find someone to help them find a resource so they could get it to you. Okay. So we're, we're already in that process of trying to help people um, get the resources that they need. So 
that's kind of where, and like, and that's the kind of thing about like when you have a bunch of hands in the pot is that everybody's kind of pulling out, you know, a, a resource. Like I found that, you know, Associated Press article today about what each state is doing, what the law is, and like I, if they're performing like procedures within that state. And I sent that over <laughs> to our resource line. I was like, hey, this is, this might actually be helpful, you know, because it explains the law for the state what where right. they are and um who's in charge like if it's the democrats or the republicans and what the actual law is like here i live in florida it's a 15-week ban so you have 15 mm -hmm. weeks to get an abortion great <laughs> <laughs> yay um where if, like in california um it's t it's till the fetus is viable which is 24 weeks so up to 24 weeks in california you can get an abortion and then it has to be because your life's in danger or the fetus life is not viable here you know i got you got 15 weeks right which isn't a lot of time because i didn't find out like for example i didn't find out i was pregnant with my, with my son till 11 weeks so if i would right. if i if this was now i would have four weeks to get the procedure right. done and also come up with and if you're low income trying to come up with the money and all that type of stuff so it it gets really tricky well and i mean that's why the heartbeat bills that yep. uh you know that were put in are uh just bullshit because you know I guarantee you most uh, pro well i'm obviously i'm not a woman but I'd, i've heard that you know most of the time you don't know that you're pregnant no. you know before that six weeks and so it's, it's really baffling to me that, you know, now women are put in a position of if, if you're liable to be pregnant in some kind of fashion, um, you know, you, you have to be constantly vigilant about, you know, uh, whether or not you are pregnant. And that's, uh, I don't, I don't see that as, as, you know, um, how Republicans uh, make it out to be like, you know, land of the free or whatnot or that you know we have all these uh freedoms or whatnot but it is it gets really, really weird though because like you know you have republican senators saying that you know we can choose when men are going to ejaculate and get us pregnant you know and we can shut it down some by some like i have a magical vagina apparently and i have that type of power great uh <laughs> Somebody I mean, didn't apparently. tell me. <laughs> apparently, like we had this power all along, and there's 10 billion people walking around on the freaking planet. It's like, okay, well, apparently, I didn't tap into magic of vagina abilities to shut things down. <laughs> so, you know, I had to get, I had to go get surgery, get my tube side to prevent babies. But if I just knew that I had a magical vagina, <laughs> you know, I could have prevented this whole thing. I could have prevented all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. so dumb it's so frustrating i'm like it drives I mean, me crazy that people that have no medical education or they don't want to and this is like a quick google search y'all this is like a quick google search how does the procedure happen how does the, you know how do, how are babies made just look just go to google ask it you'll find out you know mm -hmm. it just oh, it just Again, I'm I'm ranting. I'm ranting. <laughs> I'm ranting. No, that, that, that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, and and you know, a, a lot of the you were you were mentioning how these lawmakers are making these decisions or or writing these laws with no medical knowledge, and it seems like they've uh, consulted nearly nobody uh, about their their law because. Uh, you know, I know prior to Roe being overturned, you had several lawmakers that were trying to suggest that you can actually uh, relocate an ectopic pregnancy and allow it to continue to term. And yeah, that's not how that works. No, because yeah. <laughs> an ectopic pregnancy, we don't deal with it, will kill you. <laughs> it will right. call it, it. It will cause internal bleeding and hemorrhaging. <laughs> Right. It's, bad. it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, now that a lot of the uh, women's clinics and everything like that, that uh, you know, were offering abortion services, uh, you know, uh, so, some of them are, are closing or some states have, you know, um, pushed so many uh, 
really harsh, like anti-abortion laws that, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's little to no presence of, of those types of, uh, clinics in the state, but the, you know, they have ready, uh, ready access to those pregnancy crisis centers. And I know it, at least in Texas at one particular pregnancy crisis center, they were actually telling patients, well, pa- uh, patients, just, they were telling women that as, as long as you're careful, you can carry an ectopic pregnancy to term. And I don't know what that means to be careful about an ectopic pregnancy, but um, you know, the, these, these crisis centers are, are just, they're not like beholden to any kind of like um, I, I guess laws about, you know, pushing medical mis- misinformation. It seems like they're, they're just totally exempt from it. Yeah. And I, that's the thing that's so frustrating about it, because if you actually go to like, like I get my, my healthcare plan parenthood mm-hmm. by law, they have to give me correct medical information, science-based correct medical information that they have to, because they are, because they get funding from the government. So they mm-hmm. have to give the correct information. These cr- pri- private, these private pregnancy and yes they'll get some government subsidies but they, these are usually coming from private groups mm-hmm. you know these are coming from charities and uh, money packs within the religious community this is not publicly funded money so right. now the tax laws have changed so you can use public fund money for private stuff now so that's fun <laughs> so anyway yeah. that's a different topic but that's yeah. so so they're not required under state law to actually give people correct medical information <laughs> oh wow versus like going to like Planned Parenthood um going to your regular OBG- OBGYN they don't have to they can skirt under that man because they I, don't I, have because they don't have a government they don't have like they can say like you know oh we gave them you know like an ultrasound and stuff like that but they're, nobody's monitoring them and what they're saying to their actual patients where you're telling them you can have an ectopic pregnancy, you know, you can carry to turn. That's fine. No, you can't, you can't, you will die. You're going to have, yeah. or you're going to have some major fucking health problems. And there's going to be a lot of issues going on with your reproductive organs. If that happens, they're not telling them that. And that's because they're not beholden to the state. There's no right. oversight going on because of the, yeah, and- the religion. Right. The, the religion. And that's the aspect of all of this that really kind of gets at me is how, how very religious it is in a country that supposedly, you know, uh, is supposed to be like our government and laws, and everything like that are supposed to be neutral on the aspect of religion. But it kind of seems to me like the government is, or at least the lawmakers, uh, you know, conservative lawmakers are trying to push religion through government and, it seems like there's nothing that that is being done to stop them almost. Um, and that's uh, that that's a very frustrating thing for me. Yeah. And I think that's I think it's frustrating because like I know that there are people that are religious in, in this country that do not agree with this mm-hmm. because it, it's unrealistic what they're trying to do. It's it's not viable. It's not especially for, for a free society. Because, mm-hmm. like, if you have, a, like, the 10-year-old girl that got raped had to go to another state <laughs> to get an abortion, yeah. which is disgusting, disgusting that she had to travel to another state to get an abortion, to get rid of her rapist's baby. Because let's add, not only did we, will we add the trauma of rape there, let's add the trauma of pregnancy and having to go through an abortion at 10 years old. Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, the doctor was facing criminal charges until they proved that the child was actually raped. And then right. you get right wing media saying that they, that the left had made it up. We had made it up. Okay. Like, why? Why would we do that? It's because they are pushing a narrative that, you know, if we want equal justice and equal <laughs> rights for everybody, that obviously, like, we don't like the abortion law, so we have to make crap up. It's like, no, I don't need to make crap up because it's happening. It happened to this 10-year-old. And you're going to see cases like this 
over and over again. That's why I think the Supreme Court kind of screwed up with this one because it is going to be a logistical nightmare for them. Because how yeah. are you going to regulate it in every state? And how are you going to have it like a task force that's going to go in and like make sure like if like I decided if I decided like to drive up to you know New York or something, you know, that I don't get crossed at every single state. Like, can you imagine like you're doing a road trip and you get stopped at every single state border? Like, why are you going? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm like, are you going to have to carry on your, your healthcare records with you? You got to show that you're not pregnant to travel across well, state. It's, it's, it's impossible to do that. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that ad? Um, it was going around maybe a week or so ago and it's called the G GOP handmaid's tale. And uh, basically the, it was like a dramatization of that exact thing happening Yeah. of, you know, a mom and a daughter, they were driving out of state and they were stopped by, I guess, state troopers or something. And, you know, were were you know removed from their cars, and I'm I'm guessing arrested or whatnot. But I mean, that's uh, you know, people often or I, I can I can see some like conservatives or right wing people saying that oh well that's just an exaggeration that's not that's happening. Not but uh, but it's not happening now. But with the way that Republicans are well, rather I guess uh, these religious conservatives the way that they want to pass laws that would actually become a reality it seems and you know that's that's terrifying that, yeah because you're because <laughs> we are that is where we're heading like i don't i think people when they think of dystopian futures that it just kind of happens like you know because we're always in the middle of the story whenever we hear these stories it's it, we don't we don't really see you know what happened in George Orwell's 1984 before we're told about it, but you, you don't see it, you know, and the Hammond's mm -hmm. Hammond's tale when Margaret and I were describing a dystopian future based on the female perspective, we don't like, we have some background information in the book, but it does, you're not really seeing it. You don't see the slow mm -hmm. burn that happens that the chipping away because the religious right has been at this since Nixon. This was this started right. 50 years ago, mofos, and now we're seeing it come to fruition because they played the fucking long game. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm, yeah, and I mean, uh, in the in the late 1950s, you had people that were, uh, you know, going at it with the Christian nationalism, like, and it, it's it's been bubbling underneath the surface ever since then. So, I mean, it's, it reaches pretty far back and it's, uh, it's pretty scary that we've gotten to this point now, though. It is really scary. And, and I think that's what's so distressing about it because like, you know, those of us who are activists, you know, have been shouting like, you know, holy fuck, things are going to get really bad. And if you think it's not going to affect you, it is going to affect you because like, I don't care if you're the most religious mofo on the planet and you think Jesus is your personal savior and you're against, you know, being your pro-life and your pro-gun and your pro-death penalty, you know, all that. I don't care if you are faced in a situation, like if you have an ectopic pregnancy <laughs> as a right wing conservative, are you really going to go, you know what? I think I'm just going to wait it out and see how it goes. Like, or you get pregnant and you can't afford a child. Mm -hmm. Like you are going to say, maybe I should have an abortion, you know, like you're going to seek out help because like you can, you, and you could be in a really faithful marriage and then all of a sudden you found out your man's cheating on you or is being abusive and you decide that you don't want to bring a child into that situation, no matter how faithful you are, real life tells you something different. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with the life that you have now and the reality that you're living in. So I don't, when I hear about all these like super Christian people saying I would never do it and blah, blah, blah. Okay. I, I, I admire your sentiment, sentiment, but in, in real reality, the real life that people are living with this idealized bullshit that people have in their brains is not the reality we live in i would like i would like things to be nice and easy i would like things to people to like to have kids when they want kids and not have kids when they don't want them and not kids being born into abusive horrible situations 
but we don't live in that world. I would like to live in the Star Trek future. That's the goal. (laughs) That's my goal. I want to live in the Star Trek future. But right now we're dealing with bullshit because there's people that think they know better than, you know, the average the average citizen you know and the terror of heading towards a theocracy is the thing that i think that all those of us that are shouting about it like you are and other activists we are like no this is not what we want because i don't care if you worship jesus or yahweh or you know um Vishnu or bob the wonder toast i don't care (laughs) as long as you're not (laughs) infringing on my ability to live a happy normal life that's all like i want like if you want to worship by the wonder toes have at it i don't care i don't care as long as you're not telling me i have to worship Bob the wonder toes i'm not doing it <laughs> right yeah i i do have to say the bob, bob the wonder toast religion sounds like a a decent religion though <laughs> yeah if you, put, if you put him in the to- toaster it's like a he gets all toasty and that's his sacrifice for you <laughs> like, so. <laughs> he toasted for your breakfast he's toasted for your sins <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Helen, I really appreciate you coming on here to tell us about, uh, you know, this this task force that uh, RFR is uh, putting together. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, you know, we can already get, you know, great information from RFR if we need it. Uh, do you want to let everybody know, like, where they can go to uh, online or, or elsewhere to, uh, to get these kind of resources? Yes. Oh, and I do want to mention, too, um, we will be doing an RFRX um, on this task force in two weeks so that will be the ninth i think is it the ninth i'm bad with calendars i think it's the ninth me too it's eight eight. okay monday it's the eighth it's monday it will be the eighth so it'll be um august 8th um at 7 p.m central time and i will um include a link for you so you guys can go to and you can find out more about what we're doing and by that time I'll, we'll have a lot more information um, offered on that ta- uh, on that talk at that time. So um, definitely check that one out. Um, the week before, we'll have David Teach out on. He's going to talk about the legal aspects of um, this Roe vers- versus Wade issue. So please check out both of those. That will give you a lo- little bit more information to dive into. If you're str- and like not only this, but if you're struggling with issues of doubt and not um, disbelief non-belief um even if you're just like you're not leaving religion but you're just kind of questioning just you know co- chat in call in we're all wonderful people over there and we're offering resources and support and like i am very i've been with this organization for almost two years and i'm very proud to be part of this organization so please go to recoveringfromreligion.org me personally if you want to get a contact with me you can um, reach out to my email which is helen almedia at yahoo.com or you can get a hold of me at um, my Recovering From Religion email, which is helen at recoveringfromreligion.org. So if you ne- want to talk to me, need some resources, give me feedback, give me hate mail, I don't care. <laughs> but but um, ultimately, I just want to be a supportive, um, kind person in the world. So I, I, please be kind. I would prefer that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, definitely be kind if if you're looking to contact Helen here, because uh, you have been a fantastic guest today, and I I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, like I said before, and, and letting us know about all this stuff. Um, is there anything that uh, I didn't touch on that uh, you know you you kind of wanted to let people know about? I don't think so, because like right now, like I said, we're kind of in that beginning stage. Um, I'm just trying to get the information out as much as we can so, and get let people know that we are a resource and we're already gathering resources for people that are struggling with this issue. Um, so that's kind of where we are right now. I will definitely have more information as we go along and we'll be able to provide that um, on the website or, you, or with our agents or please attend our talks because that will also provide you with more information as well. So... Or you can just and or you can email me. I'll give you info as much as I can. <laughs> I will. 
I, I will try. And if I don't know the answer, I will find someone that does and get back to you. You know, I won't leave people hanging. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all of those links are going to be in the description below. So if you're looking for those resources or want to get, get in contact with anybody at RFR or uh, Helen here, uh, you know, all of that information is going to be down below in the description. Uh, and again, Helen, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and uh I guess we will just, uh, uh, you know, lis listen in on those RFRXs. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see uh, what else you guys do with this task force. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It is deeply, deeply appreciated. And thank you for all you do, like calling out the bullshit <laughs> and <laughs> helping um, uh, more people to think skeptically and look at the world in a more realistic way. So thank you on your end. And for, thank you for being a support to us because it, it really does mean a lot. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I've been a very big supporter of, uh, of, uh, uh, RFR, uh, for a long time. I, anytime that it comes up, like uh, wh whether I'm on like a call-in show or, or just anytime it could possibly come up, I try to mention, uh, the, the R, uh, RFR, uh, as a place where people can go to get help. So, um, you know, I feel, I feel like you guys are doing so much more than, than I could ever do. So, uh, I really appreciate you guys. Well, if we didn't have all the wonderful people in the atheist community and the skeptic community, like, you know, spreading, spreading the good word, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be here. So, think, you know, it, it, we all work together in this community. So to make the world a little bit smarter, a little more skeptical and a little bit more supportive. <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Well, again, Helen, thank you for coming on. And for everybody else, uh, if you will, please go down below and check out all of those links that we have down there, uh, especially if you're looking for uh, any kind of help that RFR can help you with. And I guess we will see you heathens later. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens. Bye, heathens. <laughs>